All right, so Matt, we're here at the uh, Neptune Aquatic Center, and we're floating around, having a good time. What do you know about Chat GPT? I don't know how you doing, Kev. I don't know much about it, but uh, a little bit that I do know is that you're able to go and, and it generates information for you that's very helpful so that you don't have to go and it basically does the work for you. Okay. Um, one of the things that you do is you're very involved with the community, correct? Correct. All right. So talk to me about the people in your community. Do they have cell phones? I mean, for the most part, I, w I don't know personally. I've seen some with them. I would assume that most do. Okay. But I would assume that, you know, some of the older the older people might not have, like, iPhones or smartphones. They might still have their flip phones. And okay. So, with ChatGPT, do you think that if you had a way to predict where food resources were, do you think that the food insecure in Monmouth County, in coastal Monmouth County, would benefit from that? I mean, it's definitely a tool to help in the right direction. Like I said, it gives you know it gives them the ability to not have to do the work, so okay. much of the work. So I think it's kind of thing of work, kind of put. The people who have access to that, those kind of phones and computers, is very helpful. If you don't have access to it, I think you know it's something that maybe we should have a place that you could go to, like a library in a sense. But you know they have computers set up for you to go get that kind of information to use the chat GPT. Okay. Um, the question that I have for you about ChatGPT in your in your community would be: Do you think there's a way that we could use ChatGPT for the food insecure to find some sort of a uh, like a food sustenance? Like, could you imagine if the Trinity Church where I volunteer and it's the Bradley Country where you volunteer, if someone could just use ChatGPT to uh, find those things out? You know? Yeah. I mean, how do you see that playing out? So simplify the question. So Matt, can you see Chat GPT as a resource that can tell people where to find food? Absolutely. And how and how would that happen? In your big vision of things, how would that happen? I mean, for the people who have access to that kind of stuff in their homes. It's easier because, you know, they have that access, but for the people who don't have access, I, again, I feel like there should be a place, you know, that we set that kind of stuff up for people to go there and have, you know, like a GPT resource center. They go there, they have computers set up, you, can, you know, you go and whether, you know, you, it's free or you have to pay for it, that's, you know, up to the base. But they go there and they're able to, you know, get like a library. You're able to get a certain amount of time on a computer. Okay. And you can look up all the kind of resources that you have or need. You can write them down, bring them with you. Now, could you imagine Chat GPT doing like a live resource? Um, imagine if like Trinity said they have a thousand cans of green beans and 500 pounds, 500 pounds of yams. Could you imagine? If someone could go from the, from the food insecure community and say, where can I find 100 pounds of yam? Yeah, I mean, realistically, I don't think anybody's looking for that much. Unless... Yeah, but don't look at the volume. Let's look at the concept. And the concept would be you'd use chat GPT to locate what you want to make for dinner. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it, it's like an advanced web search, really, for this. All right, so last question. Do you think as an advocate for the food insecure, you could find a way to teach people how to use chat GPT to afford themselves a hot meal tonight. If they have access to something that allows them to interact with chat GPT, then yes, absolutely. All right, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. No problem. Let's continue our swim. Yeah, and our lift <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>